Hello watch enthusiasts, uh, thank you for checking out the video. Uh, today I would like to do a little review of my Kronos Swiss Kairos chronograph here. A um, bit of a unique watch and um, actually I found it quite difficult to find reviews on this piece when I was looking for it, which I know can be quite frustrating. Um, so that's why I really wanted to uh, do a review of it myself for anybody else who's interested in this watch. Um, and hopefully continue doing this uh, as I tend to collect more unusual watches than the ones we've all seen being reviewed a hundred times. So uh, over the next few years I'll hopefully be able to upload a video every once in a while about these watches. So today we've got the Chronoswiss Kairos Chronograph, reference CH7523K. Uh, I'll just quickly go over the dimensions of this watch. It's a 38 millimeter, excluding the crown, uh, by about 15 millimeters thick, which sounds a little thicker than it really feels. Um, 20 millimeter lug width and a non-tapered bracelet that remains 20 millimeters uh, down to the clasp. Uh, some of the technical, de technical details on this watch um, it runs a caliber C753 by Chrono Swiss, which is effectively a Valjoux 7750. Um, in this case, as you can see, uh, skeletonized and decorated in house by Chrono Swiss, which is kind of what they became famous for, for creating these uh, more accessible skeletonized movements. Um, it boasts a power reserve of about 46 hours and um, a water resistance of 30 meters, as is kind of traditional for a dressier chronograph. Also, uh, keep in mind, this is a late 90s, early 2000s watch. This in particular is a 2004 model. Um, so at that time, that would have been a perfectly acceptable water resistance. Um, the dial on this watch is a solid sterling silver dial with an absolutely gorgeous guilloche pattern um, on the main plate of the dial. And then as you can see, inside the uh, sub-registers, there's almost like a carbon fiber effect, which is, of course, very unusual for the time and probably not what this was intended to be. But in today's world where there's carbon fiber everywhere, it does kind of remind one of that. Um, obviously, the most interesting thing about the watch is the dial layout. Um, so in this case, um, it takes a little getting used to because obviously you have your hours in a sub-register on the right-hand side. So in the end, quite a small time to actually look at, but you get used to it very quickly. Then you have your running seconds on the left and all of your chronograph functions down the center, which is actually quite a neat uh, layout because they do tend to be stationary and they line up perfectly. So it's a nice symmetrical layout that you have there. Um, heat blued hands, so uh, not painted blue, actually heat blued in this case and very nice and subtle doesn't jump out too much like some of the painted blue hands can do in most lights it just looks like black hands nice and legible against the silver dial um, but then you do get that little flash of blue in the light and the uh, printing or text on the dial also is absolutely crisp and sharp very immaculate uh, really nicely done absolutely gorgeous quality um, which is something that with Chrono Swiss, it, it, I find, especially the older ones, is a, is a nice, nice touch. You always get that very, very uh, luxurious feel and lots of attention to detail. Um, as you can also see on the uh, case and bracelet, going over the case first, um, you've got a coin edge bezel, um, which is kind of repeated on the back. This is not the case back in this case. Um, that would be this part here. So this is actually part of the case. And then you have a satin finished case band with these lugs that arc down nicely. Um, they look quite long from the top, but actually they are relatively cropped. So it wears comfortably. I'll go over how the watch wears in just a second here. 
Um, the bracelet is a beautiful piece and quite rare. Usually you find these watches on a leather strap. It does look beautiful on a leather strap, um, but having it on the bracelet just really gives it a different feeling and makes this quite a special piece. Um, the bracelet is almost like a beads of rice uh, version, kind of an XXL version of that, um, and features these beautiful screws here on the side, which normally I'm not the biggest fan of screws going through the whole bracelet, but in this case, uh, they've made it a design feature and it looks absolutely gorgeous because you do have that satin finish on the case flank continued on the bracelet links as well. And then you have the high polished screws against that. Looks absolutely beautiful, feels lovely. Um, does mean that the whole bracelet can be disassembled for cleaning and fitting. I uh, wouldn't recommend it. It is an absolute pain in the ass to put it back together but um, if need be, it is possible. And it is so smooth, so fluid, uh, very solid, very heavy, uh, really nice feeling bracelet, uh, solid end links, uh, solid end pieces on the clasp, nice big chunks of metal here, uh, and a nice thick milled clasp with a very sturdy chassis, uh, and that clicks nicely and holds shut very, very well. No problems here with this popping open even on this uh, nearly 20 year old watch. So that's very, very nice. The overall fit and finish of this piece is outstanding. Uh, I have to say, this is probably one of the most luxurious feeling sub 5,000 euro watches that I've been um, lucky enough to own uh, and have come across in my career in working with used luxury watches as well. Um, as far as uh, bang for your buck, this is a really good option. Uh, it feels very much like a sort of a, a, a Breguet sibling. It's quite heavy. Um, everything is solid. Nothing's hollow. Nothing is uh, cheap feeling or rattling. There is, uh, as you can see, very little play in this 20-year-old bracelet. Um, just everything is beautiful. The, the, the surfaces are finished in a beautiful way. I wore this watch uh, quite a lot. This was a, a daily wearer for me. And you can see, well, nothing. You can barely see any scratches on it. Now that is owed to the small surfaces on the links. It doesn't really allow for scratches to show up very well. Um, the most you'd see would probably be here on this flat piece, but even that is uh, really not worth mentioning. Nice detail there with the Chronos Swiss logo being embedded into the clasp, making this a sequential clasp as well. You have to close one side before the other. Nice little detail there. Um, the case back of the watch features the same sapphire crystal that you have in the front with a one-sided AR coating and gives it a really nice luxurious feel uh, against the wrist here uh, with that slight sort of bubble back feel. As you can see, it is domed. Um, but it, it sits very comfortably on the wrist, feels really nice. Um, and that's where we get to uh, what I was mentioning earlier. Yes, it is technically about 15 millimeters thick, which sounds kind of uh, thick, but it doesn't actually wear that thick because the case back does tend to sink into your wrist a little bit, and then the case band is relatively narrow, um, so the watch actually wears pretty nicely. Um, as far as the diameter goes, I would say it wears pretty true to size, perhaps slightly larger due to the very, very thin bezel. So you have uh, this big expansive dial, um, which does tend to make it look a little bit bigger, but then you have these lugs that come out straight. So there's a little bit of mass missing from the side that you would have if you had tapered lugs. Um, so that sizes it down a bit. So I would say it, it wears about true to size, 38 mil, maybe like a 40 millimeter watch. Um, and I'll do a, a wrist shot there just now. <clears throat> no loom on this watch, so it is uh, more of a dressy watch. I have seen it listed as a Flieger watch. I'm not quite sure if that's what I would call it, but um, yeah, dress chronograph, I think is definitely the right way to describe it. I've got 18 centimeter wrists and uh, this watch just wears absolutely beautifully on there, as you can see here. 
not too big, not too small, not overpowering at all, doesn't hang off the edge, and doesn't sit too tall on the wrist at all. Nice and flat bracelet and clasp hidden underneath the bracelet. Very comfortable, probably one of the most comfortable watches uh, that I've worn. For size comparison here, we um, I've got a uh, 37 millimeter Cartier Roadster. Obviously that's a tonneau shape case, but gives you a little bit of an idea. So uh, yeah, that about wraps it up for this watch. Um, thank you again for watching and hopefully I'll see you again with another review soon. Take care. Bye-bye.